welcome to uh, episode 6 of my video podcast about my passions for yarn and knitting. My name is Ina and I am coming to you from the mid part of Norway where I live with my family. Uh, you can find me online as Ina Pina. That is my nickname on Ravelry and also my name on Instagram. So welcome if you are coming back and have watched before. I trust that you see that I'm back in my usual recording location today, which is my youngest daughter's bedroom. <laughs> and uh, a warm welcome also if you are new and thank you so much for checking me out. I have noticed that my previous episode have gradually becoming longer and longer so I will try my best to keep it a bit shorter today but as usual I have a lot to show you so uh, no promises yet um, I will though uh, attach a clip from one of our hikes at the very end of this episode um, because it seems like you really enjoy watching those clips and this one is from uh, the area around uh, our cabin in the mountains close to the border of Sweden uh, we were there uh, this last weekend and um, there was quite a bit of snow so that's um, that's amusing for the kids and uh, exciting for all of us. The first snow is, is always magical. Um, it has now melted away, so we have uh, we have some degrees above uh, freezing point at the moment. And um, but I have noticed that during the night it is freezing cold. Yeah, we have freezing temperatures during the night now. First of all, I'm wearing my CD cardigan today. I thought I would share that with you because this is a cardigan that I knitted in February, March, I believe. And I am so pleased with it. It has this really beautiful textured pattern uh, up, up on the yoke and I knit this with a Malabrigo Arroyo I believe I can't recall the, the colorway name but it's a uh, uh, variegated deep grey with some I would say maybe some purple undertones so yeah, I've used this a lot. The only concern I have is that the, the um, this yarn is a superwash yarn and it is peeling like crazy. So I have to depeel it quite regularly in order to keep it nice. So I have exciting news for you. Um, firstly, I would like to mention that I have just established my own Ravelry group and that group is called Ina Knits surprise surprise <laughs> and you can find it by searching the groups tab on Ravelry and I will also link to it uh, below this video because I have some fun things going on in that group and I would love it if you would like to participate so firstly, um, there's of course an introduction thread, thread there, because I would love to hear more about you. You obviously know a lot more about me than I know about you guys. I am kicking off that group by uh, starting or hosting uh, my first cow. And that is together with the wonderful and super inspiring 
fellow podcaster and knitter in Norway, Emilia from Arctic Knitting. And I have recommended her podcast before and you should definitely watch her if you haven't already because she makes the most wonderful things and amongst others lovely lovely uh, color work projects and she's designing as well and dyeing her own yarn which she is selling so yeah just a beautiful maker but the first cow that we are co-hosting is called the Nordic Stitches cow the Nordic Stitches cow is a knit along where we knit patterns that Lily from the Nordic Stitches has made and she has over 20 beautiful patterns on Ravelry and um, I will link to her as well below so that you can have a look. Uh, the cowl is starting now and it will run until New Year's Eve. And uh, we are trying to support Lily. Uh, she has been struggling a lot with technical issues amongst other with her computer who has eventually finally crashed. So she's not long, no longer able to podcast and make wonderful vlogs. She just have the most inspiring and cheerful vlogs and podcast episodes. And um, she unfortunately can't afford new equipment to continue her podcasting and pattern writing for that sense because we all are so dependent on computers and technical stuff nowadays um, to publish the things that we make or that we want to share and uh, we think it's a big big shame that uh, she is not um, that it's so hard for her to continue the beautiful work that she does. So we thought we would um, host a cal and uh, we hope that you all would join us in that cal. Go over to her uh, Revelry page and uh, support her by buying her patterns and knit along with us for the rest of the year. There will be great prices um, to couple of winners from the finished object thread and to kick off the whole cowl I have decided to give away one pattern from uh, Lily's uh, patterns to three lucky winners and uh, I have opened a separate thread for that in my Ravelry group so if you would like the chance to win one of her patterns, um, I have, uh, please go over there and um, comment on that thread, which pattern you would like to win. And I will choose three winners on Tuesday next week, which is 31st of October. Okay, so that was the Nordic Stitches cowl and yeah I also wanted to mention that in addition to her pattern she also have a, an Etsy shop where she, she sells um, progress keepers which is uh, always a useful and nice thing to have so go over there and check that out and um, she also have um, a donate button on her web page. So if you would like to just donate a small amount of money to her, that is also an option. Okay, so that was the cow. I also have reached 1000 subscribers on YouTube. And that is pretty amazing. And um, 
I feel like I um, owe you all a big, big hug. And um, I want to celebrate. So I have decided to host or to give away some holiday themed yarn from my stash. Because it is today just two months until Christmas. This is Countess Ablaze Sparkly Blue Faced Baron Sock. Can you see the sparkle? It's more like a sheen, I would say, but it's very beautiful. It's not an actual Christmas colorway, it's called Attack. But these colors are Christmassy to me. This is a self-striping yarn from Musky Pigen with green stripes and some light pale speckly stripes. And this is a 50 gram skein and I am pairing it with two minis from Herbstblatt Regina which can be used for uh, cuffs, heels and toes. Yay! Hop on over to the Ravelry group if you'd, you would like a chance of winning um, some holiday themed yarn from me. There will be two winners. Now on to finished objects. My, I have two finished objects to show you today and the first one is my egg wind mitts. I love these and I have been using them yeah for quite some days already. They are just perfect for this um, cold, crisp fall days we are having here now. So this is a pattern called Eguin and um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it has this beautiful cabled panel on the top of the pan and uh, it is just plain ribbing on the back and uh, I also really like this um, thumb increase which is very neat I knit these out of Berenwulla um, I think the base is called barefoot sock and uh, it is her Halloween color from last year called Spooked and um, yeah because of the ribbing the fit of these are just perfect and it still have a lot of ease so it could easily fit a uh, a wider hand. The only modification I did was uh, that I knit my thumb quite a bit smaller than the pattern uh, instructed. Because I, I knit the thumb as it was written in the pattern and it was way too big. I had a lot of um, positive ease and I didn't like that at all. So I'm, I'm not sure if I have very slim fingers. I don't think so but uh, I don't know. Because you can choose to knit uh, the mitts in size small or medium large. I don't remember. But there were two different sizes and I chose the, the smaller one. So the thumb, I picked up the correct number of stitches around the thumb, but I 
decreased quite rapidly after starting uh, knitting from here on. And I absolutely love how the, the mitts are fitting. They're just perfect. So as the yarn was Halloween themed, I have entered these into the Halloween cowl hosted by Nordic Stitches. And her cowl is running until Halloween, which is in one week from now. So if you have knitted some Halloween themed things, uh, there are still there is still uh, time to enter them into her giveaway or her uh, knit along. <laughs> yeah, really really happy about this. The second finished object is the blue explorer. Um, this is a worsted weight, no sorry, this is a bulky weight sweater uh, which uh, was a test knit for uh, Julia Blau um, and uh, as you can see it has a round yoke, it's knitted top down and it has it's supposed to be quite oversized, um, but still, um, it's not cropped, but it's not long either. So, yeah, it's quite um, broad, but not as long. And uh, the arms are quite fitted. So, I think the, the sweater is. Um, It turned out quite nice after blocking because uh, before blocking the fabric was extremely stiff and rustic um, but it softened up after blocking and washing and I uh, managed to manipulate the, uh, the shape of the sweater so it fits much better now than it did before. But that is the magic of uh, washing and blocking, I suppose. Yeah, so I have used two yarn held together. And um, the main yarn, which is the thicker one, is uh, Pickles Tweedy. And it is in the Tegelstein colorway. And I held uh, that yarn together with uh, one strand of Holst Super Soft in a reddish brown color. They matched really well. And for this striping uh, effect, I have used uh, just a lot of scraps that I had laying around, and they're they're quite thick the stripes so they they are um, I think mostly three strands of different yarns held together so yeah I will attach a picture of me wearing the sweater here so you can see how it looks on me Okay, so on to whips, works in progress. Uh, the first pro project, <laughs> the first work in project, the first work in progress that I'm going to show you is the Speckle and Pop mystery knit along that is hosted by Stephen West right now. And I'm still on clue number one, uh, but if you 
don't want to be spoiled and see the progress, please look away. Now I will put on the screen um, the timestamp when it's safe to look again. So this is the shawl so far. And if you watched my previous episode, you might notice that this is looking quite similar to them. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason for that is just right after I recorded the last episode, I decided to sit down and really make a big dent on this one. And uh, that was about the same time as clue number three came out. And um, I was really uh, anxious to see where this shawl was going from here because I I like it, but I'm not I'm not too sure if I love it. So I looked at some uh, spoiler pictures in the Ravelry group for the Mystery Nicht um, where people had posted picture from clue number three, and I must admit that I don't love this at all, and I think that. Because I know that um, I spent quite some hours knitting on this and I am not halfway through first clue yet. So I really have to know that I would enjoy the knit and I, that I would enjoy the finished, um, finished uh, shawl if I am to continue knitting on it. So for now this is in hibernation and I, I'm i now thinking that I'm going to frog it because I'm using beautiful yarns and I am not going to throw away all of these super nice yarns that I am using. But I'm not going to frog it now, I'm, I'm, um, I, will, I will wait at least until the whole pattern is out and that uh, when I've seen pictures of the finished shawl and then I will decide if I'm going to frog it or not because who knows maybe it will turn out beautifully in the end but uh, at the moment I'm too unsure to continue knitting on it so that's that <laughs> okay and that's quite funny because <laughs> the same thing happened to me last time I participated in Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. And that was the two years ago when he designed the doodler. So I think this is a sign that I should just not participate in mystery knit alongs for a long time not from Stephen West at least <laughs> oh god yeah anyway next whip my next whip is um, the Nia Mittens from Skander Knits I have finally cast them on Um yeah, I have barely knitted on them because this is only the first mitten. Um, but this is how they're supposed to look like. And they're really beautiful, I think. So this is the second mitten in Skein Der Knits um, Selbe Mitten Club. And she is releasing one new pattern in the start of every month from September until December. 
Uh, I'm using two different yarns. The green one is uh, a yarn that I bought when I was in Copenhagen in September. It's called Sermans Garn and the color is 832. So quite a deep, uh, deep olive green. And the second one is a deep stash yarn that I have from Yesdal, which is a Norwegian producer and it is called the Vestlands Garn. Color number 203. This is a lovely color work project. I really, really like it. Next whip is my entry in the Nordic Stitches cow. So I had a good look through uh, all of Lily's uh, beautiful patterns on Ravelry and uh, she has uh, some very very nice color work uh, patterns and I chose to knit the Nordic Delight beanie uh, and this is a hat that is part of um, a set where, uh, and she has two different um, beanie patterns and one scarf and the color work is very easy um, with only two colors at a time and uh, the yarn that I'm using are some stash yarn from the DSA which is uh, called the Store Alpaca it's a Norwegian brand uh, and they I guess they have specialized on alpaca yarn. And Stark is uh, an alpaca yarn uh, in sport weight and it is nylon. It has nylon content in it. So it's quite strong and sturdy. Um, and it's at the same time it's very soft so I love to use this yarn for hats and um, mittens I have made socks out of it but I they felted quite badly when I tried to wash it in my washing machine so that I am not recommending at all but it's also very suitable for uh, sweaters I knit a Mario sweater from my dad some years ago with static. So a really nice and recommendable pattern. The rest of my whips today are socks. So I sometimes get um, urges. I suddenly I just had to get myself a pair of holiday socks or Christmas socks. So I casted on the R9 Carlos Regia Perfects yarn that I just acquired. Um, the colorway has a name but I can't remember it but the number is 9136. And I don't think it's a Christmas colorway, but I, to me these are Christmas colors. So here is the first sock. And I really, really love this. And because it's a perfect yarn, or perfect yarn, um, and I knitted cuff down, the cuffs are super long. I think I knitted for like um, over 30 rounds before I started um, the pattern. Because when you're knitting with perfect, 
you are you are just told to knit ribbing until the end of the first uh, color then you start the leg and when you hit uh, the green again it's time to start the heel so these are getting way longer than I usually knit my socks but I don't mind I think that is uh, very cool and um, because the weather is so much colder now, I really, really, really want to wear socks, hand knit socks all the time. So these will be very cozy and warm, I think. And I <coughs> barely started the second sock. I also wanted to show you um, this little nugget, uh, which is quite a substantial amount of yarn. And this is the yarn that I unwind uh, after, um, after I finish the toe, until I reach the second half of the uh, of the ball and then I could cast on for the second cuff I mean hello <laughs> it's so it's so much yarn <laughs> I just realized or last week that oh it's in the middle it's it's mid October and October is supporting breast cancer month and um, I can't recall that I have a supporting pink pair of socks. And since I didn't have a whole ball of pink sock yarn, I gathered my scraps. And I need a pair of pink socks. And here they are. Or the first sock at least and I also wanted to make them quite short because then I can wear them in my uh, low winter like ankle boots and such without the sock showing above the top of the boot so I I really like these I think they turn out so scrappy and happy scrappy happy <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. This pink leftover is from another pair of Perfect that I have knitted before. The darker pink is a uh, leftover from, um, I think it's um, Sana Sisu, Norwegian sock yarn. And this this neon neon and this neon colored speckly pinkish uh, nice yarn is from Oslo Micro Diary. And this is a yarn that I bought from them just after they opened their Etsy shop two or three years ago. Three years ago maybe. So yeah, scrappy and happy. I like that. And the stripes are three, three rounds of stripes. Yeah. And speaking of socks, last week I thought I would gather all the socks that I have been knitting and that are just lying around in the house uh, with no purpose at all so so I did and I was quite amazed about what I found I mean come on And this is not all. 
because when I gathered everything, I, my mother and father were here, and I immediately gifted three pairs to my mother and one pair to my father. And I have not brought here the thicker socks that I made. I have two, three pairs of thick socks, which are kept out of this collection. But I thought that I would give you um, a little tour of my sock stash. And yeah. So these are the pairs that I have knitted this year. And I guess that you have seen at least half of these before. Stranded Eye Works, a sock blank colorway is called Koi. I knitted these um, in my summer holiday. These are the socks that I uh, had finished in the last episode. And it's Crazy Sober Ball in the Route 66 colorway. And the heels are made out of hedgehog fibers in pollen. This pair is made out of Countess of Lace Hey Boy, Hey Girl colorway. The heels and the toes are made out of Volmaisa in a beautiful deep blue. And the pattern I've used is. Um, Blueberry, blueberry Waffle. These are shorty socks that I have made out of uh, the yarn from that I showed you in the striped shorty socks. It is a speckled neon yarn from Oslo Micro Diary. And with some contrasting toes. Um, I'm not sure what the yarn is. This is self-striping yarn from uh, Knitting in France. And the heels are made out of uh, Desert Vista Dye Works. In sparkle yarn. And these were the first pair I made this year. And these are uh, the monkey socks, no pearl monkey socks. A pattern from Cookie A on Ravelry. And they are made out of Regia Perfect yarn in a deep dye colorway. So I actually had some pink socks for uh, supporting breast cancer month. But I didn't know because they were tucked away and I couldn't remember that I already made them. Okay, so I have made other pairs as well this year, but as I said, they are uh, made out of thicker wool and they are thicker socks, so I didn't bring them down here. And a quick tour through the other socks that I have lying around. Uh, this is a pair that I made um, experimenting with texture. So I just made up the pattern. But there is no pattern. I haven't written it up or anything. And unfortunately, I don't remember the colorway name, but if you're interested, I think that I have made a project page uh, on Ravelry, so you can look it up there. The contrasting cuffs, heels and toes are made out of um, Arvetta Classic.
These I really love. They are made out of Crazy Zombie Ball. I think the colorway name was Fleder Reduft. And I love this color so, so much. And I made the pattern from Blueberry Waffle just on the top or top of the sock. These are Christmas socks from two years ago. They are made out of uh, Christmassy yarn from Musketeegan. Yeah, bright and cheerful. And I just use some random white sock yarn for heels and toes. This pair is made out of uh, Regia, their tweed yarn in the four ply. I really, really love this color as well. I really want to get another ball or, or two of this sock yarn. And the contrasting heel, cuffs and toes are made out of a drops fable or fable. But I, I don't have the colorway name. This is another sock yarn made out uh, or made for the purpose of Christmas. Two, I think there are from two or three years ago. And this is also sober ball, but it's not the crazy sober ball, it's one of the other lines they have. They are quite a bit thicker, I think it's about sport weight. I think it's a sport weight. The two last pairs are from last year's um, Sock Madness. I participated in the Sock Madness games, um, which is a competition held on Ravelry every year in March, I believe. And the competition were great fun, but I knitted so intensively that I just had to quit the competition. But I finished the first pair. I have no clue what the, the pattern name is, but uh, it's all on my Ravelry page. It's a really nice pattern though. And this is the pattern from round number two, I think, last year with beads and uh, some patterning going on and um, yeah, folded in hem at the top. They're really nice but uh, I haven't used them at all and even though <laughs> I haven't used them, they are pilling like crazy. That's quite amazing isn't it? And I ran out of yarn after finishing the first sock I think I was knitting them while being uh, on Easter holiday in our cabin and I didn't bring enough yarn so I had to continue in another yarn <laughs> in order to finish the pair in time. And I have almost completed this pair from round number three but I just quit. The competition so they're not finished yet. Lying around somewhere. Okay so that was my stash of unused handmade socks. I hope that you enjoy <laughs> my little tour. I, I really tend to knit socks a lot because um, it's a very easy project. It's easy to bring around and um, mostly it is a mindless knit for me. 
but after seeing all my socks that I am lying around, I now really want to start using them. I will probably give away um, some of them for Christmas gifts. And uh, I, th I think I'm going to just relax on the sock knitting for a while. I obviously will try to finish up what I have started. Uh, but there are so many other knits that can be just as easy and mindless. I'm thinking hats or mittens. Um, I haven't got nearly as many hats and mittens as I have socks. So yeah, uh, that was everything I wanted to show you this time. I hope that you enjoyed and if you did, please hit like on my video on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't already and you would like a notification when a new episode is out. And please, please, please go over to my Ravelry page or Ravelry group and uh, join, join the group there. I would love to, to see you over there. And uh, please take part in my 1000 subscriber giveaway and the knit along that we are doing together in the support of Nordic Stitches. I hope that you are doing well and that you are knitting on lovely things and that you have a wonderful week ahead. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye.